In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, I love you. I offer you all I think, say, and do. God, our loving Father, thank you for all the ways you bless me. Help me to be aware that every person, place, and adventure I experience is an opportunity to love you more. Fill me with a desire to change and to grow, and give me the grace to become the best version of myself in every moment of every day. We pray for the sick, the needy, the dying, those who don't know Jesus, and those who are suffering in any way. We pray for those we love, and we pray now for these very special intentions. For these and all the prayers in our hearts, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We ask God to hear our prayers and answer them, and may our Blessed Mother also intercede for us as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus walked the earth 2,000 years ago. He came as a perfect baby, was a perfect son, a perfect preacher and teacher who taught about God's saving love and his heavenly kingdom. He was a miracle worker who healed the blind, fed 5,000, walked on water, and raised the dead. He suffered and died for you and me and ascended into heaven so he could open the gates for us and be united with his Father. Yes, Jesus came and walked the earth 2,000 years ago, but Jesus is always with us. His last words before he ascended into heaven were, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And Jesus is always with us in many ways. He's on our minds when we think of him, on our lips when we speak of him, in our hearts when we feel or show love. He's with us when we pray alone and very close to us when we pray as a family. He's with us when we read about him in the Bible and when we go to church. His spirit came upon us at baptism and remains with us every day. And Jesus is with us every time we do a good deed. He is always with us, but he's especially with us in the Holy Eucharist. And that's our proclamation for today. Jesus is always with us, but he's especially with us in the Holy Eucharist. He isn't walking the earth anymore. He's in heaven. But the night before he died at the Last Supper, Jesus instituted or started the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist as his way to remain with us, not as a man with wounds in his hands, as Thomas saw, but in the appearance of bread and wine. Even though it appears like ordinary bread and wine, we know that it isn't. We don't come to Mass to worship bread and wine. We know that during the consecration, when the priest calls upon the Holy Spirit and says the words of Jesus over the bread and wine, transubstantiation takes place. Bread and wine is no longer present, only Jesus. We most often call this the Eucharist, but you may also hear Jesus called the living bread, the bread of life, and the blessed sacrament. Eucharist is the most common name Catholics use to describe Jesus in the form of bread and wine. Eucharist means thanksgiving. Living bread. In the Gospel of John, Jesus calls himself the living bread. He said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Bread of life. Also in the Gospel of John, Jesus calls himself the bread of life. He said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. The Blessed Sacrament is another special name we have for Jesus in the form of bread and wine, 
oftentimes when Jesus is present in the tabernacle or the monstrance. After Mass, the extra consecrated hosts are placed in the tabernacle. You can tell that Jesus is inside when a special lamp called the sanctuary lamp is lit. Jesus lives in the tabernacle of every Catholic church in the entire world. The same Jesus who was born in a stable in Bethlehem. The same Jesus who walked the earth 2,000 years ago, the miracle worker the Son of God who died and resurrected for you and me. If you walked into church and saw Jesus standing in front of you, what would you do? Would you get down on your knees to worship him with reverence and respect? Then when we see Jesus in the tabernacle, we should do the same thing. Always greet him and say goodbye to him with reverence by genuflecting on our right knee, just like this. For homework, I'd like you to demonstrate a proper genuflection to your parents or older sibling. Once you've got it down, ask them to place a sticker or draw a smiley face on the cover of your folder. Remember, practice your genuflection so it's perfect the next time you see Jesus in church. Do it as a reverent gesture to greet him as soon as you see him in the tabernacle and also before you leave the church. Although we can't be in church right now, Jesus can't wait to see us there again. He loves when we come to visit him. And we should be excited and feel special to have the opportunity to be so close to him when we're in church. Yes, Jesus is all around us, but he is especially with us in the Eucharist or the Blessed Sacrament. And that's one of the reasons why going to Mass is so important and awesome. Have you ever wondered why there are always people praying quietly before Mass begins and even after Mass is over? These people are enjoying quiet time in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Remember, that's just another name for Jesus in the form of bread and wine. The Mass is wonderful. It's filled with beautiful worship in prayers and songs. But sometimes just sitting or kneeling quietly with Jesus is very nice, too. When we're able to go back to church again, the, its doors will be open to us. And we'll be allowed and encouraged to stop in any time, even when Mass isn't happening. We can come to Jesus and talk to him as if he's right in front of us, because he is. You can talk to him about anything, or just sit or kneel quietly and enjoy being with him. Remember, it's in these quiet moments that we sometimes hear Jesus speaking to us. And when we're this close to him, it just may be the easiest way to hear him. Maybe when we do start going to church again, your family could get there a few minutes early or stay a few minutes afterwards and enjoy this close, quiet time with Jesus. Worshiping Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament shows him that you love him, you appreciate him, and you believe that he is truly present. And God rewards us with grace every time we visit him in the tabernacle. Jesus is also present in the monstrance. How can you tell? Because you can see him. The monstrance is used during a very special type of worship called adoration, meaning to adore. The priest takes our Lord from the tabernacle and places him in the center of the monstrance so everyone can see and adore him. It is a very special way to be with Jesus. He's even closer to us here than he is in the tabernacle. Sometimes Jesus remains in the monstrance for adoration all night long into the next morning, and people take turns sitting with him throughout the night to make sure he is never left alone. These children have gathered around the Blessed Sacrament together. It's an amazing opportunity to worship Jesus in the monstrance. It shows him that you love him, you appreciate him, and you believe that he is truly present. And God rewards us with grace every time we come to him in this way. 
Jesus is always present in the tabernacle. He is present to us in the monstrance. But the closest we can be to Jesus is to receive him in holy communion. You will be a living tabernacle. It simply doesn't get any better than that. Receiving Holy Communion is one of the greatest things that can ever happen to you. At baptism, you received a share of God's life or grace. When you receive Holy Communion, you'll receive more of God's grace, and Jesus himself will be living inside of you. You will be in union with him, closer to him than you've ever been before, and he will listen to everything you say. If we could be any closer to Jesus, we'd be in heaven. Just like we show reverence in front of the tabernacle and monstrance, we do the same when we receive Holy Communion. A few weeks ago, you saw a short video of me demonstrating how to receive communion reverently. On the next slide, you'll see that same video. I want you to watch it again. And then for homework, I'd like you to practice proper communion reception with an adult or an older sibling. We don't know yet when you'll be receiving your first Holy Communion, but you need to make sure you're well prepared. So please practice. As you kneel down in front of the altar to receive, you will kneel down upright like this, not sitting down on your, on your feet. So kneel upright. The priest will take the Eucharist in his hand and he will say, the body of Christ. And you will say, Amen. After you say amen, you tilt your head back and stick out your tongue. And Father will place the Eucharist on your tongue. You close your mouth, stand up, keep your hands pointed to heaven, you go back to your seat, and you kneel down again. So I have a container of jelly beans. Now, if you don't like jelly beans, I want you to pretend that your favorite candy is inside this container. Now I want you to pretend that we're sitting in class and I invite you to come up and take some candy. What would you say? Yes, please. All right, here's some candy. And you would say, thank you. Okay, good. Now, if I told you that I'm gonna offer you candy in class every single week, would you be excited to come back and get some more? Probably, right? Well, we're invited every week to receive something way better than candy. Jesus. Just like I offered you the gift of candy, Jesus offers himself, the gift of himself, to us every week when he says, take this, all of you, and eat of it. He's knocking on our hearts and offering himself to us. He's excited to hear you say, yes, please. He's excited for you to come and receive him in Holy Communion. And on your first Holy Communion day, you will feel amazing. You will feel closer to Jesus than ever before. You will feel loved. You will feel strong because the Eucharist is food for our souls. So you'll be a better person. You'll make better choices. And you'll be more like Jesus in every way. When you go back to your seat and kneel down, and pray, he'll just want to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Who wants to receive First Holy Communion? All your hands should be raised. Moments before Jesus ascended into heaven on Ascension Thursday, he said to his apostles, go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. These great words are called the Great Commission. A commission is a command or a job to do. So Jesus was sending his apostles out into the world. At this time, none of us can make disciples of all nations by baptizing anyone, but we can still be disciples. We learned at the beginning of the year that a disciple is someone who learns from Jesus, who wants to follow in Jesus's ways, and who wants to share the good news with others and grow God's heavenly kingdom. At the end of mass, 
we are commissioned just like the apostles were the final words of the priest at mass are go forth to love and serve the lord the priest who is standing in jesus's place is sending us out into the world to love others and serve the lord when you receive holy communion you will receive god's grace to do that you will know god better love god better and serve god better when you have him living inside of you and lo i am with you always even until the end of the age before our closing prayer i'd like to pray with you the divine praises this is a prayer that is usually prayed while jesus is exposed in the monstrance at adoration follow along with me please blessed be god blessed be his holy name blessed be jesus christ true god and true man blessed be the name of jesus blessed be his most sacred heart blessed be his most precious blood blessed be jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar blessed be the holy spirit the paraclete blessed be the great mother of god mary most holy blessed be her holy and immaculate conception blessed be her glorious assumption blessed be the name of mary virgin and mother blessed be saint joseph her most chaste spouse blessed be god in his angels and in his saints amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen dear jesus thank you for all the ways you are with us but especially for being with us in the holy eucharist thank you for the blessed sacrament where we can be near to you and see you and adore you we are excited for the day when we can be united with you like never before in the sacrament of holy communion may we always believe that you are the living bread and the bread of life may the grace that we are about to receive help us to know you love you and serve you better mary our mother you always said yes to god help us to say yes to god so that our souls may be holy and pleasing to him and a beautiful place for jesus to soon live Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.